Hello everybody and welcome to a video covering everything you could possibly want to know about Purity, the 57 leaf clover, and your luck. We'll even sneak in some stuff regarding proc chains. Ooh. Let me start this right away by saying when I refer to luck for the purposes of this video, I am referring to the actual stat each survivor has, the luck stat, and I'm not using it as a synonym for RNG or the randomness in your runs as is usually the case. So you'll be disappointed if you're hoping to hear me say something along the lines of good run simply come down to a 50-50 coin flip of RNG. The 1.0 update brought a few new items and mechanics that, um, shall we say, influenced the meta a slight amount, and perhaps the most controversial being the new lunar item, Purity. Reading its first line, the effect is pretty straightforward, shaving two seconds off of your ability cooldowns, not equipment, is pretty good, right? We're off to a nice start. But, hmm, the next part says, you are unlucky. Hmm, I wonder what that means. Well, turns out it's pretty simple. As I said, each survivor has a luck stat which defaults to zero. Currently, which is as of the 1.0 update, there are only two ways to modify your luck. Purity, which decreases the stat by one, and Clover, which increases it by the same amount. This means that if you increase your luck to plus one by picking up a single Clover and then grab a Purity, they would cancel one another out and your luck would return to its default amount of zero. Essentially, neither item would affect you, but you'd still get the two seconds shaped off of your cooldowns, which is pretty neat. Well, okay, Mr. Streamer, plus Plus one luck, minus one luck, sure. But what in the heck is luck? What does it actually do to your survivor? Aha, I'm glad you asked. In short, luck dictates the usefulness of any item that has an effect related to chance. Luck has absolutely no impact on your chest loot, shrine outcomes, etc., but oddly enough, does influence monster log and elite aspect drop rates, go figure. So you can think of luck as only affecting your existing items and effects, not absolutely everything in your run. If you have positive luck, an effect that has a certain chance of happening is more likely to occur and negative luck obviously means the opposite. This is done by simply re-rolling whatever the outcome's chance is. So if you have plus one luck and an ATG, which is a 10% chance to proc or a 90% chance to not proc, that ATG proc chance will shoot all the way up to 19%. You take the 90% or nine out of 10 of it not happening and then square that value equaling 81 out of 100 or 81% to not proc and thus 19% to proc. Likewise, an ATG with a single purity drops that same 10% down to just 1%. 1 out of 10 is squared to 1 out of 100. Yes, one single percent chance to proc an ATG. Don't worry, even if the math is the tiniest bit confusing, it'll make much more sense once we get into the concrete example. The next logical question is, okay, which items are affected by luck? And for that, there is a link in the description to a wiki page with every single item and effect listed. Obligatory note here that tougher times are unaffected by luck, so rip your dreams of getting perma block. You've got the obvious ones like tri-tip daggers, ATGs, ukuleles, etc but you may be surprised to know that things like Gore's Tome, Brittle Crown, and even the Old War Stealth Kit are all affected as well. And on top of that, the Spinal Tonic Lunar Equipment, which gives a 20% chance to receive a tonic affliction whenever it wears off, is also affected by luck since this outcome is negative, meaning you do not want an affliction. So the Clover would actually roll against the proc in hopes that you don't get an affliction. For some perspective on how powerful this is, a single Clover would reduce the 20% chance all the way down to just 4%, and a single pure would increase that chance up to 36%, so watch out for that. All right, instead of me just throwing out arbitrary numbers and hypothetical situations with no real context, let's get some concrete stuff going on now. Let's start with something simple like bleed chance. Each tri-tip dagger gives you a 15% chance to bleed per hit, and I'll be using Commando's primary attack, which has a 1.0 proc coefficient, meaning each bullet has the full 15% chance to bleed. And real quick, if you didn't know, proc coefficient is a stat on all items and abilities that deal damage, which simply determines their likelihood of proccing other items and effects by multiplying the proc chance by the proc coefficient. So Commando with a 1.0 coefficient receives the full 15% chance per dagger, while someone like Multi with his 0.6 proc coefficient on nail gun would only receive 60% of that 15%, totaling to just 9% bleed chance per nail. And again, there's a link in the description for a detailed list on proc coefficients. Now to the actual example, be sure to disregard here the stage count, monster HP, damage, and all that kind of stuff. Instead, only focus on 
the time it takes for me to apply 15 stacks of bleed. First, I have two tri-tips, so a 30% chance per shot to bleed. And with my amount of attack speed, it takes about seven and a half seconds to get to 15 bleeds, which is definitely on the unlucky side. Next, I toss in a clover, which takes only three seconds to get to 15 stacks. Note my total bleed chance over there to the right. Then I throw in a purity and note that while I have a clover and two purities in my inventory, remember the first stack of each one cancel another out. So this is basically the same thing as me having just a single purity. This brought my total bleed chance down to just 9% and oh boy, can you tell the difference. In fact, I uh, kinda, I'm getting tired over here waiting for something to happen. <laughs> As you can tell, a single purity completely shafted my overall bleed rate, and it took a whopping 16 seconds, over one second per stack, to get to 15 bleeds. But okay, that was with only two tri-tips. Let's double that and go up to four. My base bleed is now 60%, and running the same test, it takes just over four seconds to reach 15 stacks of bleed. Wow, that is quite the difference. We only doubled the base bleed chance, but reduced the time it took by almost 75%. I know, I know, my sample size is an astoundingly large one for these tests, but you get the idea. And here's something pretty interesting. If I cap my bleed at seven stacks of tri-tips, the purity has no effect whatsoever on its chance to bleed. This is because if something is guaranteed to happen, it's a 10 out of 10 chance. Rolling that 10 out of 10 again will always yield the same result, thus there's no change. Yes, this means that capped bleed and capped crit are completely unaffected by purity. However, while crit is a one-to-one -one ratio, no matter what, it's unaffected by proc coefficient. Bleed is not, and you must consider the proc coefficient of your hit when determining your tri-tip count for capped bleed on a given survivor. But once you are capped, given the circumstance, you'll stay that way no matter what. All right, let's move on up in the world and toss in multiple items at the same time. We'll start with a very basic proc chain of a single ATG and ukulele. With neutral luck, the respective proc chances are 10% and 25%, which looks something like this. Then toss in a clover and look at those puppies now. Both were almost doubled in their proc chance. And as you may expect, swap that clover for a purity and oof, that's a rough one for sure. Now, this is a pretty simple proc chain, so let's throw in another rather large element into the mix, the Sentient Meat Hook. It has a 20% chance to proc for a single stack, which we're staying at. It's the only item in the game that receives additional proc chance per stack and itself can proc chain. And bam, you can already notice a huge difference even without additional luck. This is because every hit of Commando's pistols, every ATG, every ukulele bounce, and every Meat Hook chain can each proc another item. I won't get too into the details on proc chaining, but basically the three items I chose here are all integral to proc chaining because they have a non-zero proc coefficient, unlike something such as a sticky bomb, which can never proc another item or effect because it has a zero proc coefficient. And obviously, the numbers are again annihilated as soon as a purity is picked up. But okay, what if we don't need to rely on proc chains at all? The new Kiaro and Rinald bands are pretty sweet and don't rely on a chance related proc now, so how does a setup like that work with the purity? Well, just look at the background footage. I have a purity on the loader, but taken even further beyond with the hard light afterburner and alien head on top of it all, meaning my punch is literally the lowest cooldown possible in the game at 0.5 seconds. If you didn't know, all ability cooldowns, not equipment, have a minimum recovery time of half a second, so you literally just can't break the game by spamming with brain stocks or by stacking enough purities. The math here works like this. Loader's base punch cooldown, regardless of which one you choose, is five seconds. Then toss in a hard light afterburner and a purity, and this is reduced by an incredible 73% due to the purity's flat two second cooldown reduction, applying after any percentage reduction, such as from the hard light or alien head, and then finally toss in the alien head and bam, you're at the 0.5 second cooldown punch. It's pretty hilarious that the actual cooldown would literally be 0.1 seconds if the game allowed it, which is a 98% reduction to the original amount. So yes, you can get some pretty nutty results with purity if you choose to play around the single hard hitting effect of the wedding bands. Note that the 10 second recharge time for the bands is not affected by your cooldown reduction, meaning if you're doing some purity stacking shenanigans, you'll probably need a blast shower just of the drowned and enough fuel cells for permanent uptime as the band cooldown counts as a debuff for whatever reason. Yeah, I don't know either. All I know is that the blast shower cleanses it and resets the band cooldown. Anyway, that is everything I wanted to cover on Purity the Clover and your luck stat. What are your thoughts? Want to let me know how the Purity is secretly OP on Commando, Multi, Huntress, pretty much anyone that's not Acrid Loader or Artificer? Let me know with a like or dislike on the video and in the comments below. You can check out my stream at twitch.tv slash I consider joining our Discord server as well. Thank you for watching.